Okay, uh, we're going to do a little lesson here on empirical formulas and the various different ways of using an empirical formula. The first thing you need to understand is what an empirical formula is. So, empirical is an old-fashioned word for simplest. And so, uh, it always expresses the simplest ratio of atoms or moles of atoms within a compound's formula. So, you can see here CH4 can't be expressed any more simply than one carbon to every four hydrogens. So we would just say that its molecular and empirical formula are the same. Here, uh, C2H6 could be expressed as a 1 to 3 uh, atom or mole ratio, and so CH3 is a simpler form, and so that empirical formula and molecular formula are different. Here again, C3H8, there is no simpler ratio than 3 to 8. They're both in as lowest terms possible, so C3H8 would be the empirical formula. And for the uh, alkane butane, C4H10 can be reduced. Uh, if you divide both uh, numbers by 2, you can get to C2H5. So that's an empirical formula, molecular formula comparison. Uh, second thing that we're going to look at is uh, how could you predict the molecular formula if you knew the empirical formula? This is a game that we like to play sometimes. And so an example question would be, if the empirical formula is CH2, which could be the molecular formula? Well, if, if it's a molecular formula and it could be reduced down to that, uh, we would have to see that possible with formula given. So C3H8, again, can't be reduced. So it certainly can't have an empirical formula, CH2. Its empirical formula is C3H8. C3H6 could be reduced to simpler terms. And in this case, uh, the simpler terms would be one carbon for every two hydrogens, or CH2. So that looks like our winner right now. C3H4, again, can't be reduced to any simpler terms. That is the empirical formula of uh, propyne and can't be any simpler, so it can't have an empirical formula CH2. Our winner is uh, the formula for propene. Okay, third thing we could do is say, well, if we know the empirical formula and we know the mole mass, then what's the actual molecular formula? A little bit different twist of the same game. So let's say, again, the same empirical formula is given CH2, but now let's say that the mole mass is also given in this case, let's say it was 42. Well, which of the following could have that molecular formula? Well, we could back into it by saying, well, we could just figure out all the mole masses and see which one comes out to 42. But a more intelligent way to do it would be to go, oh, look, the empirical formula has a mass of 12 for the carbon, and each of the hydrogens would be 2. So that would add up to 14. And realizing that uh, this is a simpler form of one of these formulas. Well, apparently then this number, the mass of the empirical formula, must be a multiple or uh, must be able to be multiplied by some even numbered multiple to get up to this number. So I'm just going to go off to the side here and go, okay, 42 divided by 14. That comes out to be, as you think about it a little bit, exactly 3. Well then, therefore, the empirical formula has to be have been reduced from this form. Uh, C3H6 is going to have a mass of 3 times 14. We can prove that out here right now by saying 3 times the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12, so 3 times 12 is 36, plus 6 times the atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 6, adds up to 42. So again, what we did to recap is we took the given mole mass, divided it by the empirical formula's mass, got the multiplier, 3, and then we just basically multiplied the empirical formula by 3, in a sense, 3 times the carbon would be C3, 3 times the hydrogen count would be H6, and that's how you do those. They're pretty darn easy. Okay, number four thing we could do would be talk about the percent composition of a formula. So let's take calcium carbonate. Pick this one because we can do the percentages real easy. Uh, the atomic mass of calcium is 40. The atomic mass of carbon is 12. The atomic mass of 3 times 16 for oxygen would be 48. All of that adds up to 100. So a game we could play is say, well, what's the percent uh, by mass represented by calcium here? Well, uh, calcium's percentage would be simply 40 one hundredths. Or if you want to do this on your calculator, you can go, okay, times 100. And that would give you 40%. The same with carbon. You can say percent carbon is 12 hundredths times 100 to get into percentage. 
and oxygen would be 48 hundredths. Again, times 100 if you needed to to convert it into a percentage. All right. Uh, we could do the same thing here with ammonium nitrate. This one, 14 plus 4 from each of the hydrogens, uh, or 1 from each of the 4 hydrogens will give us 4, plus another 14 from nitrogen, plus 48 from the 3 oxygens, each one being 16, 3 times 16, 48, and add those all up. So 48 and 14 is 62, and 4 is 66, and 14 more is 80. And so if we wanted to just typical regions question here would be trying to trick you a little and make sure you're paying attention that there's nitrogen in both places might be what's the percent by mass nitrogen well you would go okay 14 and 14 is 28 out of the formula mass total 80 times 100 that would be your setup often they just ask you to show the setup okay final thing that you would be able to uh, be asked to do might be to determine the empirical formula from percent composition data. And so how that would be done would be to take the percent composition data just given to you and make what we call the 100 gram assumption and assume you have 100 grams of stuff so 40 percent of 100 grams would be 40 grams of sulfur and 60 grams of oxygen. Now convert those numbers into their moles so we can go eventually to the mole ratio which again is what a formula does represent. It represents the actual mole ratio of the elements in the compound or it could be used for that purpose. So to do that, I'm just showing the setup here, I just kind of made this vertically, it's a nice way to set it up, moles sulfur, moles oxygen, took the 40 grams of sulfur divided by sulfur's atomic mass, 32, 40 divided by 32 comes out to be 1.25 moles of sulfur. Do the same for oxygen, 16 grams of oxygen divided by oxygen's atomic mass, 16, comes out to be 3.75 moles of oxygen. And you can pretty quickly see that this is in a 1 to 3 ratio. 1.25 divided by itself is 1. And so I did that on purpose. I took the smaller number and divided every other mole number by that number to get the hopefully the whole number ratios out here. So 1.25 divided by 1.25 is 1. 3.75 divided by 1.25 is 3. 1 to 3 ratio, therefore the formula is SO3.